If you're looking to buy finger motion stock, then keep watching this video because we're going to look at the company's recent news, how the market has been treating the company, and what are the technicals telling us. And then we're going to try to come up with the best trading approach given the current circumstances. As the market is still very volatile at the moment, we should always be mindful of which positions to pick, as well as the individual timing and exposure. Before the video begins, if you would like to see more stock analysis videos like this one, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Finger Motion has been trading lower over the past month, going from $6 to barely above $5, with a plateau that has been reached mid October, before a downslope that took place on October 19th and onward, all the way to October 25th where a pause and an attempt to get back higher has been made, but ultimately gave way to the sell-off that saw the price meeting a lot of resistance around $6 and being put back to around $5. Ultimately, the key level in the short term is the $5 level, and that we should closely follow up to see whether we can provide some solid, like some solid support for the time being so that the stock may have the time it needs to regroup and to re like try to reach higher levels. Now, let's take a look at the technicals. The trading volume of finger motion has recently been around 630,000 shares versus the average volume of 940,000 shares. Over the previous 52-week period, the price has been fluctuating between $1.01 and $7.97. ,01 the volume of shares traded tells us how many shares are being bought and sold at any given point in the market, and if there is enough liquidity to support a trading strategy. If the float is thin, it would be very easy to influence the stock price, but low liquidity could mean that the demand is limited too. When we compare the current volume against the average volume, there might be the possibility for trend reversal or breakthrough. If the difference is very large. For instance, if the stock were to break through, the current volume could be very much different compared to the average volume. The market cap of finger motion is currently around $280 million compared to the enterprise value of $52 million. So, as we compare the current price to the historical price fluctuations, the stock is 5% higher than the one-month low, 28% higher than the three-month low, and 400% higher than the 52 weeks low. On the options market, which often gives us a hint on the market sentiment about where the stock is likely going to head next, the implied volatility is 142% versus a historical volatility of 168%. The put call volume ratio is currently at 3%. It is normal for most stocks to also tend to have a higher put option volume than what they deserve because many institutional investors hedge their long positions by buying put options. The most recent volume of options traded is 5.5 thousand contracts a day versus the 30-day average of 5.8 thousands. In terms of open interest, the most recent volume of open interest is 57,000 contracts versus the 30-day average of 70,000 contracts. In terms of the shareholder structure, institutional shareholders own 1% of the outstanding shares. The biggest shareholders include BlackRock, Prime Capital, and iShares. Usually, it's always good to see some institutional participation when holding a stock long term, because it offers a layer of stability and a token of reliability in the medium to long term. It means that the market is confident that it will deliver value in the long term, which is an important factor to consider for the investors. I personally consider the minimum threshold to be around 25 to 30 percent for institutional ownership, although there are many exceptions to this rule, as there will always be great companies mostly owned 
by retail traders. The current short interest is 10% of the total float, and 53% of the transactions are coming out of the dark pools. Usually, if the short interest is above 15% of the total volume, and a significant chunk of it comes out of the dark pools, it may suggest that there are institutional positions taken to short the stock, and that there would be potentials for a short squeeze. So right now, the global markets are facing a complex interplay of factors that have the potential to significantly influence the equities worldwide. In this speculative analysis, I believe that the consequences of the global inflation, surging commodity prices, and decline quantitative easing, as well as the rise of inflation rates or interest rates, plus the geopolitical instabilities, are going to play a significant part. The increasing inflation rate has been putting pressures across the globe, threatening the purchasing power. Raising the input costs and impacting corporate profitability, companies operating internationally may face challenges in managing rising production costs and also to sustain profit margins. Those dynamics could trigger market volatility as investors adjust their risk-return expectations. The upward trajectory of commodity prices, including energy, metals, agricultural products. Have been having far-reaching implications for various sectors of the global equities market. The companies heavily dependent on these commodities may experience squeezed profit margins, potentially affecting stock valuations and investor sentiment. The reduction or the end of QE's quantitative easing measures by the central banks worldwide may have resulted in reduced market liquidity. So this, in turn, could lead to higher borrowing costs for companies seeking capital, which may also discourage investment activities or will. The elevated market volatility, plus the reduced investors' appetite, may also continue to occur. Now, the central banks around the world are tackling this delicate situation of balancing the inflation rates. With the economic stability and, if possible, growth, central banks opted for aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflation. Borrowing costs for companies have been rising, which has also slowed down business activities and also fueling the market's volatility in terms of the equity prices. Now, ongoing geopolitical tensions, including trade disputes. Political uncertainties and social unrest will inject an additional element of volatility into the global markets. Investors may adopt a cautious approach, shifting towards safer assets, impacting the equities. Additionally, the escalating conflicts may disrupt supply chains, negatively impacting the performance of international companies. Given the interconnectedness. Of global markets, the aforementioned factors have reverberating effects on the U.S. equities market. Companies with significant exposure to international market may face a lot of headwinds resulting from the economic slowdowns, disrupting the supply chains, and the currency fluctuations. But nevertheless, the U.S. market is known for its resilience and the diverse sectors. May attract investors seeking safe havens. So, really, the current landscape is characterized by global inflation, surging commodity prices, surging commodity prices, reduced quantitative easing, rising central bank inflation rates, geopolitical instabilities, and also ongoing lack of certainty regarding growth. While the U.S. market may exhibit relative strength due to the safe haven status. It's going to remain interconnected with the global economic landscape. For long-term investors, these conditions may offer opportunities to identify undervalued companies with strong fundamentals and international diversification. That being said, short-term trades should be approached with caution, 
because of the increased volatility and uncertainty. And also, we should be careful when assessing individual companies, sectors, or regions. If you're looking to buy finger motion stock, then keep watching this video because we're going to look at the company's recent news, how the market has been treating the company, and what are the technicals telling us. And then we're going to try to come up with the best trading approach given the current circumstances. As the market is still very volatile at the moment, we should always be mindful of which positions to pick, as well as the individual timing and exposure. Before the video begins, if you would like to see more stock analysis videos like this one, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Finger Motion has been trading lower over the